Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Hani Rambod, here with my co-host, Austin. And we're here to talk about how to pick a trainer. It's very important. It can change a lot of things, whether you're just getting into fitness or competing. It's a big, big, you know, the right mesh with a coach is so important. We get that all the time, yeah. whether it's in the gym, whether it's online, I get those questions. How to pick your coach? And there's different levels. And I think what we're going to do is we have a very wide array of athletes and coaches that follow this podcast. So we have people in the beginning stages of their bodybuilding journey. And then we have those that follow us that are trying to win the Mr. Olympia. And they do message me and they do appreciate us <laughs> asking specific <laughs> questions. I won't name names, but outside of my own athletes. And I feel that we need to do a little bit of a community service message here about how to be able to pick your coach mm -hmm. because there's a big difference between online coaching and trainers. So we want to break down all of those different aspects. So on this episode of the truth podcast, we're going to be talking about this coaching situation okay. and how to pick the proper coach. So you've been coached a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that like I've, I've had a very interesting experience because I had just people pick me up in the gym and start teaching me stuff. And then I was tossed over to another person who pick you up in the gym. No, I mean like, I don't, I don't know where out. you're going to go hold with up, that one. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> no. All right. So meaning just, they found me there and we're like, Hey, you have good potential. Let's do this. You know, I'll help you out with your nutrition, whatever. I was always nice to everybody. So people got to know me and everything like that. Uh, wasn't always the best influences. We'll get into that down the line a little bit. But as far as, you know, I think that not a lot of people know, just, I'm trying to think back to that period of just how to even begin. And they kind of just gravitate towards the per first person they see in the gym. That might be the biggest person there uh, or just the first person who talks to them and offers them some help. So I think that like this would be super helpful for somebody who's just have never worked with a trainer or a coach before, doesn't really have much knowledge on it, but just wants to figure out how to have the best because you might just pick somebody and they could totally lead you down the wrong path instead of actually knowing the right questions to ask. So could you kind of cover that from a very basic beginner standpoint? Yeah, I think this is a very wide topic mm -hmm. and I want to try to keep this within the 20, 30 minute range. Yep. But if we go a little under, a little over, don't, don't, you know, don't <laughs> hold me to it. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing is understanding what the, your goal is. Mm. It all starts with where your goal is. So if you're a beginning bodybuilder and you're looking for a coach, my suggestion is to get an in-house trainer. Get somebody who can actually train you in person. Why is that? Because they're going to teach you the basics of biomechanics. And I've talked about this in prior episodes, but I think we're to compartmentalize this into one episode of how to get the proper coaching for what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. What you want is you want somebody who can be, sit down and pick you apart and say, am I doing these exercises properly? Somebody who you know in the gym who has a really good reputation for being able to do those types of things. Who's not an online coach. Cause you're not going to be able to do that. It's almost like having a chef online that might have some amazing recipes, but if you don't know the proper techniques on how to properly mix in the ingredients and how to be able to whip up the egg whites in a proper way, or being able to put all those things together, you're not going to come out with that same type of end result as you would if you knew how to do those basics. So again, this is for the beginner who's looking for this. Or somebody who needs to get reestablished with getting better mind muscle connection because they're not able to work on those body parts. So that will help with you as well. But it's really important in the beginning to have somebody who can help you with multiple things. You might not get lucky enough to find one person to help you with everything, or you might an old, old older school bodybuilder or someone who's competed in the past, who's also used to coaching, who can do all of those things is ideal, but you may not always find that. Yeah. You might have to have two different people to do two different things. Or you might just need to alter the gym you're training at because that could also affect it too because I feel like there's a lot more of those bodybuilder-esque gyms that are popping up now mm -hmm. that are a little bit outside of just going to 24 or absolutely, and then you might be able to find more people in that absolutely. category there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Recomp. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> plug for them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Our buddy Nabil over there. Yeah. I saw him training. He lost 50 pounds. What? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's a solid chunk. There. Yeah. We need to get him on the show. Yeah. That'd be we need to get him on the show. Yeah. Especially because of the business aspect of it. Yep. Being so young, Nabil is like 24 years old and mm -hmm. he runs one of the most popular gyms in the area. Yeah. And it's been great because he's not only gets influencers, but he gets a lot of athletes now. Yeah. And they had a big powerlifting meet at the very back of the gym and there was like zero parking and i was like what the hell is going on here doing something right 
Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it was amazing. Cause I think there was like a couple hundred people that showed up to wow. come watch this powerlifting meet. That's awesome. So, but that type of gym is great because you see it brings in other competitors and mm -hmm. then you can turn around and get other competitors that might also be coaching people. Mm -hmm. Not all competitors are bad coaches, but there are a lot of competitors out there that because they've competed once now that they're an expert. Yeah. And just because you've been to the chiropractor doesn't make you a chiropractor. Remember that boys and girls, because someone in our industry, someone does one show. Now all of a sudden they're a coach. I would stay away from that. But there are people who've only done a couple of shows, but they've spent a lot of time coaching a lot of people and they've been able to do that. I haven't been at the Mr. Olympia competition myself, except for in the seats. I haven't competed at that level. I'm not an IFBB pro, but I've trained a lot of them. But that's through a lot of rigorous work because I like to be able to be very, very detail oriented mm -hmm. with the programs I write. So going back to who you're picking in the beginning, you should have someone that's going to work on your form to make sure that you're really maximizing the muscles that you're trying to work. So for example, are your biomechanics off? So your biomechanics and being able to go through your exercises, are you squatting properly? Are you making sure that your knees are not too far forward or too far back? Where are you making sure that you're hitting your chest and not your delts when you're hitting chest or you're not hitting too much delt when you're trying to hit biceps? All of those things that somebody who can look at your physique and say, okay, well, let's take a look at these body parts or let's go through one session with every single body part that you're working on and let's break it down to see what we can do better. That's what I suggest starting out with. Again, whether you're a beginner, you could even be advanced and somebody can help you with that. Yeah. But you're going to need help with that in the beginning. The second thing is your diet. You need somebody who's going to help you, whether you're off season and you're trying to gain weight on a clean bulk. If you have a super fast metabolism, you're going to have a really bad time putting on size. But if you have a, if you're a person who puts on fat very quickly, you're going to have a worse time. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you don't go into this dirty bulk because if you do, you're going to end up losing all that muscle when you're trying to lean back out. So you need somebody to help you with that. So it's going to help you with accountability so that you're going to have to check in, but it's also going to help you with creating boundaries and creating a reference point so that somebody says, well, Hani Rambod, what is the optimal body fat for off season? It depends on the person. Yeah. Somebody who can be a little bit higher. Again, I don't even check, but I always look at different points, whether it's intermuscular fat or sub Q fat. And I say with Derek, where, where's his body fat go? Like sometimes in his lower back, it might be, you know, in his glutes or wherever. Everybody's a little bit different. Hottie always stays a little bit leaner and lighter because he's just, his body's just, he's just one of those people who doesn't put on a ton of weight, but he puts on better quality, but not quantity. So everybody's a little bit different. And I'm, I'm giving examples of, of top pros so that people understand. So mm -hmm. there's younger audiences for those people that are now following the David Butler series with him getting ready for his first show where he has a fast metabolism. He's, he's always lean. He's always lean yeah, and yeah. he's dieting on 3000 calories, right? He's 175 pounds, call it, and 19 years old, but he rips through the yeah, calories. Yeah. So now going to 27, 2800 is now, wow, it's a deficit. Yeah. But he was dieting on between 28, tw I'm sorry, 29 and 3200 for the longest and still getting harder and harder and harder. Wow. Now he's going in there. So everything is about reference points compared to what you need. Because if you're naturally a really person that it takes a long time for you to lean out, you don't want to go really high in the body fat in your off season. So you need somebody to help you with that diet so that you can try to create that accountability so that you can do check-in pictures in the off season, make sure you're not getting too fat, stay on the leaner side. And so that might not be the same person as that's helping you in the gym, but if it is even better, because that way you can kind of create even better bond with that person. But you want to work with somebody who's going to be able to help you with your diet as well as your training. And then what you're also going to need is you're going to need somebody who is going to help you if you're going to compete eventually with your posing. Mm. Now, those could be three different people. Nowadays, everybody likes to specialize, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't like to be able to go through poses. I, I do it with my top guys because I, they're already 90% there and I might make some slight adjustments especially when in the gym and I say, Hey, this is how you're doing that front double bicep. I don't really like that. Bring your elbows up a little bit, bring them a little bit forward. Let's create more depth in the chest mm. 
because you're going to do that. You're flattening yourself too far back by bringing your elbows too far back. You're flattening yourself out. You're becoming too two dimensional. I'll, I'll break that apart. But what you need to do is have somebody there that can really help you just understand how to do mandatory poses. Yeah. So that's another key factor. So if you are getting ready for a show, how to do that. So when you're picking a coach in the very beginning, it's always best to go local. I've been just really, really driving that nail in yeah. saying, hey guys, try to find somebody local so that they can not only see you in person, but to understand your body and the fluctuations. So I think that's a whole nother level of accountability because I do want to ask you about kind of online versus in person in a second here because it's so prominent with all these online coaches. But I think that also it's a different level of accountability if it's somebody that happens to train at your gym or they're a trainer there is they're not just going to see your weekly check-ins. They'll see you there pretty much every day and they'll know if you, and it's almost like if you think they're going to be there, you'll get in there every single day. And I know that I've had, you know, buddies that are training partners and it's like, oh, I, they're going to be there no matter what. So I have to make sure that I'm there every single day. Um, but with online coaching, you might just get a weekly check-in and they might say do four sets of 10 of something, but they're not going to say how to do the four sets of 10 because right. they're not going to watch you. Right. Um, so with online coaching becoming so prominent, is there, you know, you've kind of listed a little bit, but what are your main reasons for not going that route as a beginner? Because you won't get any of the understanding of the biomechanics. Yeah. And num that's number one. Number two, what ends up happening is a lot of online trainers build their business on volume. Automated. Yeah. Well, it's not just automated. It's just volume. Yeah. I, got, I can answer this many questions and that's about it. I know a lot of coaches that just don't like to get into the training portion of it because it's very time consuming. So they just rather give you, you know, a cycle update, some food update, increase the cardio, mm -hmm. and that's it. They just want to give you just little, little things that if you're more advanced, it might help. Yeah, yeah. But what you really need in the beginning stages is, are you really activating your chest when you're doing presses? Are you making sure to pre-exhaust your chest with maybe some flies? Are you making sure that you're doing quads properly with being able to squat mm -hmm. in the right biomechanic position? Like, are you able to get your depth in your, in your, in your quads? I'm sorry, in your squat and, you know, breaking parallel and going back up. Are, you know, all of these little nuances that, an online coach won't give you because they're going to assume yeah. Yeah. that you already know how to train. And yeah. I figured that out a long time ago that a lot of people, even pros don't really maximize their training. They just yeah. keep doing what they're doing and they just try to go heavier. It doesn't mean that they're working harder or trying to find different ways of being able to manipulate their body into growing or being able to work around weak points. They're just focusing on just trying to go heavier. And then next thing you know, they're doing a bent over row doing four plates, yeah. but their back doesn't look like they can. And then when you turn around and you slow everything down and you tell them to go out and do it properly with one plate, they're like, oh my God, my back is just <laughs> locking up. So I, I want to keep it real here. You guys need to understand that there's ways of manipulating your body and getting that mind muscle connection that needs to be broken down. And this is the homework that a lot of people don't like to do. People, some people don't like to train calves. Some people don't like to train abs. A lot of people don't want to go and do the work, the fundamental rework of understanding how to better their biomechanics with training. And I'm sorry, this is fucking important. Mm -hmm. You need to really understand how to make those lagging body parts grow. Stop fucking around. Stop wasting your time. I don't like seeing people doing this heavy ass weight and they don't, and they have a flat ass chest, but they're like, oh, but I'm so strong. Yeah, but so what? This is a bodybuilding show. This is not a fucking powerlifting competition. Yeah. And then you have to go through and you have to break all of those bad habits and then start all the new ones fresh again instead of starting out with a good foundation with a good trainer who can actually make sure that you're just starting out from a good place. There's so many people who just form these terrible habits and then you have to actually forcefully break them and fix them. And I actually got some questions actually it was interesting when it comes to David Butler. I think that's a good example. He had great, built a great physique. You know, he had looked great. That's the whole reason we kind of approached him or one of the reasons. Uh, no, no, actually that wasn't the reason why. Really? No, no. The reason why him and I started talking is because he had good arms, but he had no chest and no back. Yes. Yeah. And so when he was training back, he was pulling all with Those his arms. arms. So that's when I saw him in the gym yeah. when I first started training at Absolute. And what happened was I saw him and I go, this guy's got great arms, but he's got no back. Yeah. And the reason why he's got no back is because I'm watching him train and he's pulling with his arms. Yeah. So I taught him how to arch his back and try to manipulate his lats and being able to really pull with his lats. And then his back started improving. Great improvements. Yeah. And so, but the same thing was going on with his chest. 
he had decent shoulders. They're okay, but he wasn't getting that mind muscle connection with shoulders. I'm sorry, with chest. And so I was giving him some tips on that, but that's how it happened. It wasn't because I was like, Oh, this guy's amazing. I well, just yeah, said, no, he's got great arms. I go, but if he wants a good back to be able to balance out his physique, cause yeah. he kind of hinted that someday me, he might want to compete. And that was the but case. But he saw potential there. I no, saw some saw, potential. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because he was also working really hard because yeah. he would work the whole day and yeah. then he would go and train. Yeah. So that's how you know yeah. somebody's willing to go above and beyond. Well, yeah. And the, and the questions I was getting on it were, were interesting on that topic where people were saying, you know, wait, was, was some of that staged in the initial chess video? Because the guy looks really good. Normal people kind of looking on the outside mm -hmm. in, you know, not knowing that you have to correct a lot of these things. But people were like, he looks great he probably was acting like he didn't know how to do some of these things. And I was like, no, even people who make it even way further than he does don't know how to do simple dumbbell presses or simple things like that, that you had to work with him to correct in that to first optimally video. optimally do them. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So they just work on getting stronger and eventually, hopefully yeah. it works out for them. Yeah. But the sooner you can take care of this, I use a lot of different analogies because I try to always try to find things that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. It could be a car analogy. It could be a golf swing. Again, I'll, I'll use the golf one this time. If you go and you start wanting to become a good golfer and you go to Top Golf and you just start hitting the ball and you say, I'm going to go there every week, I'm going to go there twice a week, but you don't have a coach give you suggestions on what to work on, you might start to ingrain really bad habits. Yeah. And those bad habits happen every day at the gym. And what happens is if you don't realize that those are bad habits, years down the road, trying to go back and fix them makes it more and more difficult. So if you're starting out a new program, or if you're just starting out as a beginner in bodybuilding in general, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you learn proper form and you try to focus on the muscle that you're working on because you're, it's going to pay off in spades down the road. Yeah. Trust me on this one. Now, if you go out of your way and wait to do this because you just are really just hard, hard headed, you're going to end up either getting hurt down the road or you're just going to waste a lot of time. Mm. A lot of frustration trying to break those bad habits. Yes. So it doesn't matter what it is. It could yeah. be a golf swing. It could be, I go to the shooting range. I have a professional that works with me. I turn around and want to be able to create good habits so that when I go out and shoot on my own, or if I'm out there, and even when I was golfing back in the Bay, it was one of the things that I wanted to do was work with a pro so that they can turn around and give me good habits so that now even years later and i haven't played golf in years i still can hit a ball pretty pretty well yeah you know we went to top golf oh yeah cranked yeah, it yeah but it's going back to those good habits that were formed in the beginning so if you invest a little bit of money in the right places it can go so much further than just going out and trying to see if you can buy the ultimate cycle yeah, yeah. off of somebody that you think that's going to be the the fix all yeah it's not it's really creating the proper foundation on that end so invest in really good information. Try not to work with people that are just getting involved because those people that are just getting involved that just did their first show or haven't coached a lot of people are not going to be able to give you the level of expertise because they don't have the experience. Mm. And if they're, if they're experienced, then you're going to have to pay them a little bit more handsomely for that information yeah. because they have been through a ton of crap, <laughs> lack of a better term, a ton of shit. So they've been able to build up their, their resume that way. So if you get somebody super famous and you want to go online and find the ultimate coach, I don't care if you're a woman that's going after bikini or this or that, if their business is very, very large and it's in terms of, I guess I, I would say more volume based, mm -hmm. you're going to get less attention. You're going to get that 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. And that's it. But if you're getting somebody who's trying to build up, but they're, they've got a pretty good track record coming up and they're willing to give you more time, that's the ideal situation, Yeah, right? Because they're willing to try to really invest in you. So they're going to go out of their way. They're going to obsess about those things. So whether it's the training, nutrition, the check-ins, making sure to call you and say, hey, how's your, or text you and say, how are those workouts going? Yeah. How are, how are those changes that we made? You don't see that very often anymore. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the things, but you wanted to talk about your experience. Well, yeah, that. I was going to say, because we're talking about all of the ways of not building, you know, wanting to make sure that you avoid the dangers of not building a good foundation and different things like that. And I think that the other thing that I, spe I specifically wanted to share about was not letting people lead you with like dangerous 
information down wrong paths and stuff from getting bad advice from just some danger will robinson yeah <laughs> danger <laughs> danger well yeah because yeah. because i i just started training at fitness connections a little ten dollar a month gym uh for just you know when i was 15 16 and was essentially approached by a guy who was like oh i can coach you and do things like, it didn't charge me for anything i don't necessarily he just wanted to help me out with different things help me out um but ended up essentially getting me on peds at that age uh really yeah very young um this it is was the first just, time you're talking about this yeah yeah i haven't really disclosed any of this kind of stuff but it was just which to be honest with you, i don't even know if they were real because if you see me back then <laughs> did not did not look at they were real um but it was like this super, is at 15 or 16 uh 16 17 16 17 yeah probably closer to 17 but it was just and was the guy a trainer trainer had some clients some but gym could, bro but you could was tell it a yeah, gym bro? it was by far definitely a gym bro. but, but he didn't see, work at the gym no no, okay. it was very kind of uh, under the radar there and all that stuff. Didn't didn't teach me about anything training wise. Like okay. didn't go through anything biomechanic wise. I was watching watching a lot of YouTube videos to try to learn that. But I kind of just thought, oh, like, well, this is just to amplify it. I knew nothing about PEDs in any kind of way. And uh, so definitely was, they were just little shaped like little dog bones and little things like that. It was all orals. It was just. Uh, they gave you soldier dog vibes. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's probably what they were. They're probably like flea medication or something like that. But uh, the thing was, is he prepped me for my first show. And I. So from when you met this yeah. person. Yeah. To the point where you did a show, how long was that? Probably like maybe six, seven months. Six or seven months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, for lack of a better word, I said- How old were you when you got on stage first time? 17. 17. Yeah. Okay, so you started young. Yeah. Because now the, the limit, I mean, you have to be, I believe is 18 yeah. to compete now. Yeah. Where in the past they had 16, 17. Yeah, it was a teen division. Right. But the yeah. teen division, I don't believe now, it goes below 18. No. So that, probably that, for that exact reason. Yeah. Could not have people do that, but uh, it legitimately just starved me to death and gave me those like i was just it was doing two hours of cardio and eating nothing and ended up competing i think at like 150 something and you're how tall um i'm six foot were you six foot back then yeah 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 <laughs> so i was, didn't do too much growing between then and now but like in comparison my last show well that was only like two or three years ago so <laughs> no, yeah exactly <laughs> uh, you know yeah eight ish but my last show in 2019 i was 187 on stage okay so so but like just looking at that as far as i don't i don't even know if they were real or anything like that but still just the dangers of even if that was or wasn't or whatever did you feel any side effects did you feel like were you breaking out or were you no doing anything I've, like I've, that? I've never really had that problem i've never really gotten so you've never had real like drugs that. before <laughs> <laughs> in some experiences since i felt what they the, the good effects from them but surprisingly i've just never really had too much of that you know that kind of problem but just got to be so careful with some of these people that are just gym bros that will convince you right to pay you know give them 50 bucks for a little container of whatever the heck uh even the first time i branched out into injectables or things along those lines was a very sketchy situation it was not very smart but that was only at you know 18 19 um so, so before that you just did orals yeah that was did, it how did you do your show oh pff, horrible first one absolutely terrible i think it was like sixth out of eight people you know it's just not good then it got a lot better later on and then got even better once i actually was coached by people who knew what they were doing okay. and were very very invested last coach communication was incredible and was mm -hmm. very hands-on was there you want to talk um, about who, who it was or not greg mccoy oh greg I yeah greg yeah owner of hidden gym yeah and so that was uh, just super, super, We'll super delete that part out because it's Greg. <laughs> <laughs> we it's love you, Greg. All the bad things. Love, just yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Going, like, if it was bad, we would have left it in there, but it's good. We're going to take it out. No, yeah. we love Greg. But just, just like, you know, when it comes down to it, I just use me as an example uh -huh. of just things not to do just with going with somebody who do your due diligence ahead of time, ask around. The first time I went to a bodybuilding, bodybuilding gym was Destination Dallas. Bo what was that? Bodybuilding, bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, That's bodybuilding. Yeah, like a real something that actually yeah. had people training their hard. Had some guys walk up to me and start giving me some advice right off the bat. First day there. Mm -hmm. Turns out it was Mike O'Hearn and Ben Pakulski. They nice. were training in there. And nice. they started giving me tips. I was like, these dudes are big. I have no idea who they right. are, but they were giving me some tips on things. I'm like, this is cool. Uh, found out later who they were. Um, but when you, I feel was like Mike, was Mike giving you trend tips? <laughs> <laughs> it's duck eggs or whatever it is. Who's telling me to eat? Uh, <laughs> Come on, let's unravel the, him right now. Are you telling me that Mike O'Hearn gave you drug tips? I, I did not say that. You're not putting me out. Mike's going to come after me. Did he say, no, seriously, did he say something? No, 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 oh. not at all. No, oh, it was okay. all tips on just training right. and everything right there. Nothing along those okay. lines. Okay. All right. Uh, but just like, 
so, you know, people who usually know what they're talking about will be a little bit more, will actually advise against that. Mm-hmm. Meaning I feel like people, the, the bodybuilders that I've encountered who actually know the what purists, they're doing, the purists. Yeah, they'll advise staying natural as long as possible, mm-hmm. doing things the proper way. Gym bros in the gym are just going to load you up with whatever. I think they're starve you to death. They're not trainers they're dealers. Yeah. That's, and that's legitimately what, have, what it was. That's yeah. what you're just remember the information you're about to get. Mm-hmm. If they're trying to give you the solution mm-hmm. and that solution is also being offered to them, they're a dealer. Yeah. They're not a trainer. Yeah. There's a big difference. And a lot of people think that these deal, these trainers are dealers and whatnot. Any good trainer is not going to sell you a bottle of testosterone no. because they're going to ruin their life by doing that. Yeah. They're going to say, go get your own shit. And then if you, I feel like you're worthy enough, we'll go ahead and talk about it, but they're not going to turn around and do that. Now I'm not saying every trainer has the morals at that, le- at that level, but I'm saying you to you that the ones that have a really good established business, they're not going to risk trying to sell no, drugs to you no. to turn around and build a business. So again, but the ones that are in the business are in the business because yeah. they're in the gym, yeah. not training people, but give Dealing. you exactly yeah and i started i was a little bit skeptical when they were gummies and shaped like flintstones but i got really good are you being after- serious no. right <laughs> oh i was I like got real good pumps afterwards no 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 but i i think i'm just that's one thing that i would say if i had to put that in there is just be super careful vet people out ahead of time make sure you actually know who they're talking about and if you can tell the difference between a dealer and somebody who's you know just trying to who actually wants to help you um, but just kind of moving on from that a little bit into kind of just quality. yeah, and thank you for sharing that yeah, because yeah. we always talk about those horror stories. Yeah, but now you're actually being open about this, yeah. and I didn't expect it on this on this because uh, well, I had to go through a lot of healing process to fix everything that was messed up from that. My metabolism was just shot. I was starved. So that was from was, from under eating. Yeah, just that okay. first show. I think I got down to like 800, 900 calories. Wow. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I was a twig. I'll have to find some photos of that, but so, it was rough. Yeah, I don't even understand how somebody can justify giving <clears throat> you that kind of program. Yeah. The So you went through that. Mm-hmm. You went through the whole, I want to compete stage. Yeah. My, my thing here is let's try to go back to how to maximize your coaching yeah. and how to be able to get the best out of your coach now. Yeah. So again, do the biomechanics, make sure you break down all of the different aspects of bodybuilding, the nutrition, who's working on it. How are you going to, how are you going to go about doing your check-ins? How often is that? Is it in person? Is it online? If you are using an online coach, and I'm not saying don't use online coaching. Yeah. I'm saying as a beginner, it's better to get the money together for a trainer that can actually train you and give you as much information in person because that will take you so much further. They'll help you how to pose. You can pose in between your sets. You can do some of those things that you see me do with my clients and those things will go very, very far. If you are a more advanced athlete Mm -hmm. who feels that they've got their training on lock. And that's something that's already been taken care of. What you can turn around and do is really focus on using a trainer. That's going to be able to get you to that next level. Let's say you were trying to go pro, but you've been with a coach and that coach hasn't been able to get you to your pro card, Mm -hmm. but you know, deep down inside you have the ability and you want to just improve. When you work with a new coach, what you need to do is you need to be able to share as much information as possible on things that worked and didn't work because coaching your coach is so important on your body because you're trying to make up for lost time that that coach hasn't worked with you for all those years. Right. So when I make them jump through hoops to figure you out, well, they're going to anyways, if they really care. Yeah. yeah. Right. I do, but I'm not expecting everybody to be like me, but I will only work with less than 10 people a year. Yeah. Because why? Because what I want to do is want to make sure that I can give, a high level of attention because I also run a supplement company. I've got a lot of other responsibilities I got to deal with, but I've never been a person who can emotionally take on that many people Mm. because my programs are not scalable to that level. The best I could do is take the information on my training programs and say, okay, I want to be able to increase the intensity. And that's why I came out with FSC seven in general. I'm not even talking about the app. I'm talking about just inventing an FSC seven training protocol was so that I can create intensity for my clients without me being there. So I could go there once, go through with them, with the exercises, how to create intensity with volume and create that solution. And then now luckily there's an app that you can go download 
And for those, again, they keep asking me, I apologize. I did. I mentioned that there was a special that we did for, for a couple of weeks free. It's just use the code, the truth. If you want to get access to my app for free for the first couple of weeks, use that code. It'll give you access to all my workouts on there. And I'm going to be adding more. The only issue is the fact that it's only on iOS right now. So if you're on Android, get an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Have your gym buddy be holding up That's the right. iPhone while you're training. That's it. Yeah. So it's, it's got all of those workouts built into it. But I used the FSC7 protocol and created it so that it can create remote distance learning yeah. on how to in, in distance basic intensity. But even you realize that this wouldn't be in a beginner's, you know, you're realizing that get a trainer, learn these things, and then you can apply them. To right. But let's say, things. but if you are training right now, yeah, yeah. you can use the FSC seven app sure. and be able to get information out of it to really help you. Yeah. So there's, there's information about training, about nutrition, about all those things. But what I'm saying is that if you are a person that needs to go to another online trainer, or if you want to go to a super famous coach or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. At that point, what you want to do is you want to be able to share with them what works, what doesn't. If you're missing peak week because you think that, hey, look, I could have looked 10 or 20% better, figure out what you did wrong. Try to say, hey, this is what I think we did wrong. I think me and my prior coach, we didn't, we cut our sodium too soon. We cut the water too soon. Or these different PEDs may not work well with my body because I felt like these types of situations started to occur at this time or these types of foods didn't work well with me. Or when I was doing this kind of cardio, I really felt like I got too weak. And then the coach can sit there and say, was this a, a under eating problem? Mm. Or was this an overtraining problem? Or would, you know, whatever they are able but to put together. But you're giving them something to work off of. They, they got to play a little bit of Sherlock yeah. Holmes yeah, yeah. to be able to understand the trials and tribulations that you went through to try to go back and reinvent those and say, okay, how do we get around these so that they don't, affect your body negatively during the prep. Yeah. So now we're going from the beginner stage to the intermediate slash advanced athlete. And what you want to do is you want to share these things so that with that advanced coach, you are able to get the most out of mm -hmm. your coach. You need to be able to work with them, but you also have to get along with them. And what does that mean? There's got to be a certain level of respect. So if you feel like that person's only going to give you some different secrets the secrets. I just need the secrets of how you got these other people their pro card or yeah. those pro wins or mm -hmm. how to got them their title. Then just pass because you're not going to respect the rest of the process. You're expecting just a little tidbit of information that you think is going to create a big result. That's not going to happen. I'm telling you right now. What you want to do is you want someone who's going to be able to help you with different aspects of the preparation whether it's off season, whether it's pre contest, whether it's training, whatever it is, and how to make you better, where one to two percent of all of those things that we just discussed is going to make you ten to twenty percent better at the end. But if they're trying to give you things like, "Hey, all we're going to do is I'm going to increase all your dosages," that's all we're going to do, yeah. or we're going to do this, those are all red flags. So again, stay away from that stuff because it's a shortcut to a dead end. Yeah, you might get some benefit from it short term, but long term, you're not going to get the results that you want long term. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. A lot of people have proved me right about that, that are, have gotten sick or they retired or unfortunately passed away. And I think that when you need to work on getting your body better, you want to work with somebody who respects you and your health as much as you respect them. And it, there's a symbiotic relationship that goes on with that. And you really need to put a lot of respect into the information that they're sharing with you. And if you don't, you're either not going to follow it or you're going to say plain and simply want to listen to somebody else yeah. around you that is going to give you a lower common denominator. Yeah. I'm going to give you an example of that. If somebody's telling you that you have to do 45 minutes of cardio and that's your coach, but your gym partner is telling you all you need is 25 minutes. Well, guess what? Now, what's the point of you having a coach? Yeah. You can't pick and choose the information you want to listen to. What you could do is turn around and say, my concern coach is that's a little bit high compared to what I've done in the past. So therefore, what do you think about us doing this? And then you, after you give 
your assessment of what you think of the information that they gave you, you guys can work out something and then they can say, he could say, he or she could say, the reason why I have you at this is you're actually a little bit heavier than you were in the past. Yeah. That's why I want to bring you down. And I want to explain to you why my process is a bit different than what you're used to. So again, they should take the time to explain to them why the decision making is made the way that it is. And on the back end of that, they, you need to turn around and be able to say, okay, I'm going to put enough trust into you to listen to you. But if my body starts to fall apart or unravel, we got to make some changes here pretty quick. Yeah. And that's how you work synergistically together with a coach. But if you're going to just pick and choose where your gym partner says, you look a little flat, let's go run over to in and out burger. Yeah. Or I feel like I know my body. When you start the sentence as I know Usually, right there, yeah. you're done. Yeah. You're done. I've had many, many clients in the past when I was coming up where they would turn around and say that. And I had to deal with those personality where if you knew, then why are you asking me? Yeah. Cafeteria coaching almost just picking and choosing for wherever they want. Right. Because yeah. they wanted to pick and choose because they think that there's secrets that they want to pull from you yeah. instead of the secret is the whole product comes from all of the information combined. Mm. Not little bits and pieces that you're going to put together and you're going to say, I'm going to steal this and this and this from them because, I, oh, it's that that one drug or it's that yeah. one type of macro or it's that one extra fish meal or it's whatever or it's that one piece of cardio that really made a huge. It's not. It's not. It's a culmination of all the information and how you turn around and you adjust that information so that you get to a better place. Yeah. But if you are going to sit there and second guess anything that person says right from the get go. Don't waste their time and your money. Yeah. Stop. Because all you're going to do is you're going to just piss each other off at some point. And it's just, like I said, it's a waste of time and money. Move on. So get with somebody you respect and don't try to just steal secrets mm. because it's not going to work. And how, how important would you say personality is when it comes to that, even just as far as melding in that category, what do you think are the personality traits that make a good coach? I think that personality doesn't matter as much if you're working with an, uh, in, like a trainer yeah, one-on-one -on -one because you just need to be able to get that hour and be able to get the biomechanics and all that. Yeah, That's very important. But when you're working with a true coach that you're going to be talking to on the phone, it's super important. It's actually the most important thing that you got to have chemistry with that person. So there could be chemistry to the point where you can become lifelong friends. Or you can turn around and be able to have just enough chemistry where when you're talking regarding the business aspect of getting down to the prep in the off season and they're going to follow it. So at the bare minimum, it's that, that's that, that mutual yeah. respect yeah. to the athlete and the athlete to the coach. But some of that goes so far, especially when you're starting out or when you're in the middle of your growth stages of your career as a coach, some of my closest friends are like Phil Heath and you know, he was in my wedding. I have, you know, Hottie's super close with me and my family. We have all of these people. Derek and I have become closer. A lot of these people that I've become really, really close with throughout the years and some of the younger athletes that I've mentored and I felt like I, a father figure to some of these because I really want to see every aspect of their, their lives thrive. Mm -hmm. It could be personal, financial, all of these things. So if there's a question, I'll answer it. And if there's a way that I can help them, I will. But I'm not going to turn around and try to overstep my boundaries. But at the same time, I am going to go out of my way to try to figure out every single solution to a problem that they may have because I've done it so much with so many different athletes from not just bodybuilders, from NFL athletes to Olympic athletes to a lot of others. So again, to summarize all of this, what I want to do is really focus on in the beginning stages, try to get somebody in person. Then as you get more advanced and you're working with possibly more of an online or remote coach then make sure that you have that mutual respect for one another where you share information mm. so that you can turn around and be able to share with them the proper things that have worked or maybe you're concerned about that hadn't worked for you in the past. And then if you'd still decide on maybe something a little bit different than what you thought was going to happen for an adjustment that that person had made, then take note of it and then reassess it in a week or two to see if it actually worked. So that's how you're going to be able to get a great result in your next show. Boom. <laughs> Buttons it up nicely. Yeah. <laughs> mic drop. Go. Yeah. yeah. I got a little intense there. For it a did. Wow. All right. <laughs> well, I've got a very big passion for this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and don't blame your coach. At the end of the day, don't blame your coach. Make sure you understand that, that it, that's so 10 years ago. Yeah. Take what you learned from them. Respect it. Move on if it didn't work out. But 
don't don't use them like State Farm Insurance and try to like a good trainer. State Farm is there. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So I've used that that joke yeah, in the past. Yeah. But again, guys, Austin, any questions? No, I think that buns it up nicely. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, everyone out there, let me know what you think. Tell me about your coaching experiences. If you're a coach or an athlete, go in the comments section in YouTube. Let me know. Let me know if you like me to expand on some of these different topics that I'm talking about, because again, these are very near and dear to my heart. And I feel that coaching has gone in a really wide direction, uh, not necessarily bad, but just different. So make sure you let me know if you're had a good experience with a coach or if you want to talk about that particular person or if you want to leave their name out great or if it's something that you want to put into the comments where other beginners can possibly learn from then go ahead and please add to that too because we want to be able to share so that the community can grow all together so again thank you so much austin hani rambod and that's the truth